In this video, we're going to discuss angle of departure or angle of arrival. And this is a very important topic in root locus technique in control systems. Let me restate what is root locus. Root locus is nothing but the locus of the roots of the characteristic equation of a closed loop transfer function when a parameter is varied. In general, in all our problems, we're going to vary the parameter k from 0 to infinity for finding out the root locus of the characteristic equation. And we have seen before that the root locus starts from the open loop poles and ends at open loop zeros. In case if open loop zeros are less than the number of open loop poles, then the rest of the branches are going to end at infinity. To see what is angle of departure and angle of arrival, let's take an example. And uh, I'm going to consider a transfer function in which we have poles, one pole at zero, at or at the origin and the other pole at minus 1. In this case, g times h is 1 over s times s plus 1. Now, if you have gain k and if you change k from 0 to infinity and if you take a closed loop transfer function which is g over 1 plus g h and if you vary k and look at the roots of this particular polynomial, if you write it 1 plus g h equals to 0, for this equation if you look at the roots, if k is changed, then this pole over here is going to move in this direction as k is increased from 0 to infinity. And this pole is going to move in this direction as k is in increased from 0 to infinity. Now, th for this pole, the angle of departure, okay, we call angle of departure for poles and for zeros, we call it angle of arrival. Okay, For this pole, the angle of departure is 180 degrees. Okay, and for this pole, the angle of departure is 0 degrees. Now, for let me write it out here for open loop real poles, angle of departure is either 0 degrees or 180 degrees. In case of open loop real zeros, it is again. 0 degrees or 180 degrees. The only difference is these are called angle of arrivals and for poles these are called angle of departure. Okay. Now for real poles and real zeros we don't have any concern. We know the angle of departure or arrival just based on this angle criterion. We know that this part of the section between these two poles is existing as the root locus on this real axis. So we know the angle of departures for these two poles, right? But the complication comes when we consider complex conjugate poles or complex poles on the real axis, as well as complex zeros. Now let's take an example to see how it is handled, okay? Now I'm considering an S-plane, okay? Let's take this as an S-plane and take pole zero configuration of an open loop system uh, so to be like this. Say I have two complex conjugate poles here and I have one pole here and one zero here. Now, if this is the case and suppose, let me take a point known as say S1 and suppose assume that S1 is present on the root locus. If S1 is present, then the angles made to this point by all these poles and zeros, if you take the net angle okay, made to this point S1, then let me take this value, the angle made by this pole, uh, let me name this pole P, okay, the angle made by this pole is 5P, let's take this to be 51, and angle made by this is 52, let's take this 53, okay. Now, S1, suppose S1 is very close to this P, and the delta difference between S1 and P is very negligible. Suppose say that. Now, let me write out the net angle, which is like a angle made by the zeros minus angle made by the poles, 51 plus 52 plus 5P. Okay. This should be equal to plus or minus 2Q plus 1 times 180 degrees, right? Whereas Q equals, it can take values 0, 1, 2, etc. so on. Okay. Now, 
when s1 tends to p even then this equation remains same okay so if we rewrite this equation let me take phi p outside we write phi 3 minus phi 1 plus phi 2 okay this let me name this as phi okay minus phi p equals plus or minus 2q plus 1 times 180 degrees and q values we know now if, we, if i rewrite this let me write it here phi p equals plus or minus 2q plus 1 times 180 degrees plus phi okay this is an important conclusion okay that angle of departure if you want to calculate for this particular pole then you have to substitute s1 tending to p so substitute the value of p in g of s h of s and calculate this phi value excluding the value of phi p okay from this we can see we don't have to consider phi p because we are calculating it right so this is the formula to see it and if we do the same thing we will find out that for in case of angle of arrival the angle of arrival for zeros okay phi z can be written as plus or minus 2q plus 1 times 180 degrees minus phi okay these are two important formulas to remember okay fine let me rewrite the expression which we derived for poles which is angle of departure for poles phi p equals plus or minus 2q plus 1 times 180 degrees plus phi okay and we'll get a better sense and understanding into this one once we take a problem let's take a problem let me take this problem where open loop transfer function is given as s plus 2 times s plus 3 over s square plus 2s plus 2 okay and we can rewrite this as s plus 2 times s plus 3 divided by s minus of minus 1 plus j1 right times s minus of minus 1 minus j1 okay if if i if you try to represent this in s plane okay with the poles represented this is at minus 1 this value is minus 1 and this is plus j1 this is minus j1 and we have two zeros one zero at minus 2 and one zero at minus 3 now we want to find out the angle of departure for this particular pole let me write it p okay now if you want to calculate the value for p then we have to find out g of s h of s value when s is equals to p okay this particular value and exclude that particular term to calculate the angle of it so angle will be equal to before that let's substitute s equals to p as this one is minus 1 plus j1 right minus 1 plus j1 plus 2 times minus 1 plus j1 plus 3 whole divided by and we are not going to take this term right now minus 1 plus j1 minus minus of minus plus plus 1 plus j1 okay now this resultant will be 1 plus j1 okay and uh, 2 plus j1 divided by 2j and the angle for this uh, from this expression we can write angle will be equal to tan inverse of 1 minus sorry plus tan inverse of 1 by 2 which is imaginary by real minus tan inverse of imaginary is 2 divided by 0 which is infinity now this angle this angle which we are getting is nothing but phi phi equals to 45 degrees plus 26.565 degrees minus 90 degrees the resultant will be minus 18.435 degrees okay now we can find out phi p that is angle of departure from this pole equals to 180 degrees plus phi which will be equal to phi is minus 80 degrees 18.435 degrees right so phi p will be equal to 161.565 degrees 
Now, how do we represent this value on this plot? Okay, this is 90 degree line and 160 will be somewhere here. Okay, the, the root locus starts from the open loop pole from here and it goes in this direction. And it will be a mirror image because the root locus will be symmetric ar 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 above, around this sigma axis. So, it will be like this. Okay, it starts from this. Now, this is one way of calculating it. This is mathematical kind of. Now, if you want to do it in terms of graphical way, okay, how are we going to do this? Uh, let's see what is the angle. Oops. Let's see what is the angle made by this pole to this. It will be 90 degrees, right? And made by this one will be 45 degrees. Angle made by this zero will be 26.565 degrees, right? So now the net, the phi will be equal to angles made by the zeros minus angle made by the pole, right? Which is nothing but 26.565 plus 45 degrees minus 90 degrees, which will be minus 18.435 degrees. If you use this phi and try to calculate phi, we get the same value, right? So this is a graphical way of calculating this value. Now, before uh, concluding this, uh, I've seen people usually getting confused with this uh, plus or minus 2 cube plus 1 times 180 degrees. And why did we take only 180 degrees here, plus 180 degrees to be particular, right? Suppose, let's take an example to show it doesn't make any difference actually, okay? Let's take, I have a point here and the angle to this is phi. Okay, now let me add 180 degrees to it. Okay, I'm going to get this point shifted to this point and the angle added is plus 180 degrees. Okay, now in case if I add minus 180 degrees to this point, we are going to get the same line and it will be the same line, right? So it won't make any difference. Now, in case if I want to add 2 plus 1, 3 times 180 degrees to the same phi, then 180 degrees in this direction, 180 degrees back here, and one more 180 degrees, I get to the same point which was actually given by 180 degrees addition, right? So by adding any of these values, we are not going to see any difference. So it's better to take a simple value. So that's why we have taken 180 degrees here. If you like this video, subscribe it. And if you have any questions, send me a message or comment below the video. Thanks for watching.